3A. An ordinance authorizing the Philadelphia Gas Works by Philadelphia Facilities Management Corporation, Philadelphia Municipal Authority, and the Commissioner of Public Property to enter into transactions and contracts regarding a liquefied natural gas project on property and facilities owned by the City of Philadelphia and operated by the Philadelphia Gas Works. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. Uh, today I ask my colleagues to support this bill. I want to say a few words about where we are, where do we need to go, how we got there, and how this project fits. The early effects of climate change are already with us, and countries, especially the United States, have already polluted enough to lock in further negative change. We know that to pre prevent cataclysmic changes, we must move swiftly away from reliance on extracted fossil fuels. We also know that an equitable plan to do that must balance the needs of low-income ratepayers, workers, our public-owned utility, and all our current residents and future citizens. In the absence of leadership from federal government, state general assembly, that responsibility falls entirely, at least for now, to the city of Philadelphia. With its limitless human potential, but obvious economic needs, and de definitely limited financial resources, we must take action. Um, this body has already taken action um, last year um, through the leadership of Councilmember Blondo Reynolds-Brown. Um, this body worked with the Philadelphia Energy Authority to do a solar initiative um, with Community Solar that will provide 20% of our municipal energy spend in Adams County through Adams Solar, which will be the largest uh, solar array in Pennsylvania. Just this Monday in the Finance Committee, we voted out the CPAST, or the Commercial Property Assessment Plan Energy Program, or CPAST, which provides incentives for commercial and industrial buildings uh, to invest solar on their buildings. Um, the, for the most part, and I think most people do know this, but for those who do not, the majority of our climate change comes from commercial, residential, industrial buildings. So the energy that we use to operate City Hall, to operate our homes, come from uh, carbon dioxide emissions, and the legislation that we voted out of the Finance Committee on Monday, had first reading today, uh, and hopefully a final passage next week, um, shows our work toward addressing that large aspect of climate change. But we know that Philadelphia must change. We, mu we have yet to develop our plan. In April, the Transportation and Public Utilities Committee heard initial testimony from several experts about how to shoulder this responsibility. Among the policies proposed were green molecules, district heating, and electrification. But option and ideas are not a blueprint. Fortunately, due to the leadership of the Office of Sustainability, under the leadership of Christine Knapp and the work of PGW, the Bloomberg Foundation has awarded the city money and technical assistance to study the diversification pro diversifying the products that PGW offers. Even with the ongoing effort to review how their business model can evolve, there must be a broader conversation about how the city proceeds. I intend to continue to convene all stakeholders in a fair process to build a shared vision and craft an equitable plan for how the city deals with climate change. In the meantime, PGW took as instructions the opportunities laid out in the report that this council used to determine not to sell PGW. And prior to my becoming a member of this body, working for Council Member uh, Marion Tasco, spent about nine months looking at the sale of PGW. Based on our review and analysis, the net result to the city would have been about $200 million. And so we've decided that we decided that we did not want to sell PGW. And so we put to PGW, as Craig White said earlier, let's look at other alternatives regarding liquefied natural gas. Um, PGW has been looking at LNG for some time. Going back to March of 2012, they engaged Place Global to do a market study and also a review of supply chain economics regarding LNG. In 2012, um, PGW also had a pilot program of sales of LNG. In June of 2015, they issued a request for information for the idea of doing LNG along with Place Global. In January 2016, they engaged public financial management to do an independent review of the possibilities of liquefied natural gas. In April 2016, PGW issued a request for proposals for LNG sales. In September of 2017, um, PGW did a memorandum of understanding over proposers that were selected by PGW to develop um, LNG. 
and I was with the Liberty Entity Trust in September 2017. In June of 2018, the Philadelphia Facilities Management Corporation Board approved uh, this proposal. In fall of 2018, the Philadelphia Gas Commission, which I chair, um, completed our review and we voted upon this on December 4th of 2018. In the winter of 2018, we took additional conversations and in December 6th of last year, the, this bill was introduced in the City Council. On February 27th of this year, um, the Transportation and Public Utilities Committee voted out this bill. And on March 28th of this year, uh, we had briefings from members of City Council regarding um, the liquefied natural gas proposal. The project involves Liberty Energy paying to create a new liquefier to be operated by PGW employees at the existing Pass Young plant. The liquefied natural gas from Liberty would be responsible would be responsible and has the best business case in offsetting the local consumption of dirty oil and coal. The city carries effectively, this carries effectively no risk to the city of Philadelphia. The deal would guarantee one million in non ratepayer dollars to PGW, which is otherwise severely restricted by the state PUC in how it spends money. We all know that the city has the highest level of poverty for any big city in the nation at 26%, and this additional non-ratepayer dollars can help offset possible rate increases that, P that the PGW may need at PUC. In addition, it will give us some resources to start to diversify and do different things with PGW. In addition, invest in some solar projects like the project that this body approved with the Philadelphia Energy Authority last year with Adam Solar and look at other ideas um, regarding renewables. In addition, on the desk of each member of council, we looked at what would this proposal do compared to other uh, facilities in the city of Philadelphia. We looked at the Philadelphia Energy Solutions um, plant, which is a former Sunoco plant that emits over 3.2 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. This project would do two tons our carbon dioxide emissions per year. That's two versus 3.2 million. Now, we also pushed upon Liberty Energy um, Trust to come up with some additional ways to reduce that type of carbon dioxide emissions. Um, they have been talking with the mayor and on the mayor's list for RCAP dollars with Governor Wolf is the dollars to do a solar array. If that solar array is approved, and we're pushing hard for that array to be approved, that will cause a net zero emissions at this plant. As Craig White talked about, even without the solar array, this is equivalent to seven new row homes in the city of Philadelphia. And hopefully we'll be able to get the solar array and we'll continue to push upon um, the Wolf administration so that will be approved. It also is worth noting that some of the ideas that were talked about at the April 27th hearing regarding, regarding green molecules and other ideas could possibly be processed at this facility. Now today, there was an email that was sent out regarding um, communication. Um, there was a long list of information that was sent out to members of council. Um, council members um, also received information from PGW. Um, that community outreach included the fact that all near neighbors within a half mile radius were contacted, and numerous groups were also contacted regarding um, this proposal. Since the beginning of this conversation, I've encouraged those who are engaged in advocacy to continue their work. And I'll restate that. I've made sure and I continue to say that those that support and oppose this bill, we still need your advocacy. Without the national mobilization and international strategy proportionate to the task at hand, those advancing the position that everything possible must be done to reduce the supply and demand of fossil fuels are the warning sign that we all must need to focus on to make a course correction. The merits of this project are where we, all, where we differ. This project is a nearly net zero emissions project at the existing plant operated by current gas workers for, for a facility that should substitute dirtier fuel, fossil fuels and could process possibly non frack natural gas and guarantees the city money. It will desperately need, that it will desperately need to implement the transition from fossil fuels that we all agree must happen. For these reasons, I, I ask my colleagues to vote and support this bill.